Are you using the right storage for your systems? If not, then the wrong choice could be slowing you down massively. Whether you're a content creator or an active gamer, choosing the right drive makes all the difference. Today, we're going to be breaking down the different types of storage devices from old school hard drives to blazing fast SSDs. In this video, I'll show you how I personally use each one of my setup to give you an idea of what could be best for you. First up is a Seagate 2TB Barracuda hard drive. This is a traditional spinning disk drive that stores data on magnetic platters. The big advantage here is the capacity, so you get tons of space at one of the lowest costs per gigabyte compared to any other storage types. This is considered a cold storage drive, which basically means it's where I keep the files that I don't need instant access to, like completed project renders and media archives. It's not really meant for active editing or running applications, but more like a vault where I can just store files for safekeeping. The downside though is that it's very slow with speeds ranging from 100 to 200 megabytes per second. The random reads and writes are especially bad, so if you're using this for gaming or booting Windows, then this would be incredibly painful. But if you just need simple storage, hard drive discs, even though outdated, still have their place, especially in my system. Next up, we got the 2.5 inch SATA SSDs. These drives cap out around 500 megabytes of read and write. Generally, these are way faster than HDDs and are still reliable for a lot of tasks. I've got two of these in my setups. The first one is the PNY CS900, which I use as my dedicated Windows boot drive. It's a budget SSD, which doesn't have any DRAM cache, but it's fine for just strictly running the operating system. This is enough to let me quickly boot my PC right to the desktop in a matter of seconds. For $35 at the time, this was worth the purchase since I still use it 7 years later to boot my system today. Next is the Crucial MX500. I use this drive primarily to run all my applications and programs. This one is higher quality compared to the PNY, which has DRAM cache and is more reliable long term. Over time, you'll have a lot of programs, so having a dedicated drive for all those applications will help organize and save you tons of space. Even though this was $50 more than my local drive, it's worth it to spend the extra funds for a lot more storage space and speed. If you're still on a hard drive, then even a cheap SATA SSD like this will feel like night and day. But they are older tech now compared to what we're getting into next. Here is where things get exciting, NVMe SSDs. These use PCIe lanes directly, giving you speeds from 3000 all the way up to 7000 megabytes per second, depending on your motherboard and CPU. I have one of these in my system, the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. I use this as my games library to ensure that I can quickly boot and play any games with no downtime or bottlenecks. This SSD is generation 3 and is very solid for fast load times and overall responsiveness. In general, you can use this more practically for other things like heavy editing workload or 3D projects. I get roughly 1.7 gigabytes of read and write, which is way faster than any of the storage drives that we've mentioned so far. When I first bought this at Best Buy, it was priced at $150 and I thought it was one of the best investments into my PC at the time. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Big vacuum on that. Alright, they're gonna be grouped up. Bro, oh, holy shit, that fucking bow. <laughs> this is so much damage. What the <laughs> Are they still committing to me? Hey! Sorry, Anzu. <laughs> Yo, GG's Anzu. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Had to do it to you. Mounted it. Not gonna die. Oh ho ho ho! As technology advances, older hardware does get outdated, so I recently upgraded to a Gen 4 model. This is a 6x7400, and as the name implies, the 7400 promises 7400 megabyte speeds of read and write. This is almost 5 times faster than my Samsung 970 SSD, 
But unfortunately, even though my PC is a bit outdated here, my motherboard is a Gen 3 model which caps it out at around 3500 megabytes. On the bright side, this means that if I do upgrade to a better PC, then I am future proof for a faster storage drive. What's surprising here is that the price on this is only $65 and available immediately to purchase on Amazon. With this drive, it can be used as my dedicated workload strictly for heavy media editing and projects. With all that, let us use all these drives and install them into our PC. As a bonus, how about we mention some portable storage systems. First is a Samsung T5, which is a portable USB SSD. This is a simple solution to SSDs to access the drive without the whole SATA connection. Since it is USB, you can seamlessly plug and play this device into your ports. I first bought this in 2018 as a way to transfer stream recordings between my laptop and my newly built PC at the time. I remember spending $130 on this and it was one of the biggest purchases that I made back then. But overall, I got so much use out of it since I was heavily into starting content creation. It has the same speeds of current drives of 500 megabytes per second through USB 3.1. Someone died. No way, bro. That was so clean. I didn't even get hit once. Oh. Why do big rocks do big damage? Yeah, right? Fuck him up, guys. Oh, oh shit. Slushy <laughs> got fucking wiped. My man got windshield wiper. Oh, no, not Lydian, too. <笑><笑><笑> These days, I do all my work entirely on one setup, so this SSD doesn't really get used much anymore. However, it still has its purpose in case I do want to fall back on it. For now, I generally use USB flash drives. They're more tiny and much cheaper, and you can get abundance of them in one purchase. I have the PNY 64GB USB, which comes in a pack of 5 for $22. I use this to carry around and quickly transfer media or documents between systems. I have one for emulators and local games that doesn't require access to a cloud storage or Steam library. I can just boot it up at any time and get right into gaming. But the main use is just having a backup Windows boot because you'll really never know when you need one. Trust me, your future self will thank you for this. It could also be smart to have some important program softwares and drivers to save in case you need them as well. For almost the same price, I can get one singular flash drive that has more storage and is much more powerful for bigger jobs offering up to 400 megabytes per second in speed. This is a SanDisk Extreme Pro. Sadly, this has replaced my Samsung portable SSD as it's just more compact and easier to carry around. Compared to having something that is more bulkier that I need to store in a carrying case with the necessary USB cables. This flash drive offers similar speeds to the SSD for a fraction of what it costs. And with this, you should have a clear understanding of most storage drives, their purpose, and the options available. However, if you're still unsure on what to get, then let me give you a quick TLDR breakdown. Hard drive discs are cheap bulk storage, great for archives and completed projects or media. 
SATA SSDs are a budget upgrade over HDDs, which are perfect for operating systems and apps, but they are capped in speeds at 500 megabytes per second. NVMe SSDs, these are the modern standard now. They can be used for all purposes and are insanely fast. These are exceptional for gaming and heavy task projects with read and write speeds of over 7,000 megabytes per second. Portable SSDs are for those that work on the go and require speed and portability. This is great for creators moving large files around consistently. Flash drives can be quick and convenient, ideally for small transfers, but has niche uses for things like operating system boots. Overall, each one has a role, and for me, I like to balance and organize them all separately. Cold storage for the HDD, programs on a SATA SSD, active gaming and editing on the NVMe, and transfers all on the portable drives. Guys, I hope that this helps you figure out if your current storage setup is right for your needs. If you're interested in any of the products shown in this video, then I'll provide a link to them in the video's description. I had these products all the way from 2018 to 2025, so the prices may vary compared to when I first got them, but I assure you that the prices will only get cheaper from here on out while the hardware continues to improve. They're also built to last considering that I'm still using it 7 years later. If this video helped you out, then please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. With that said, thanks for watching and until next time, take care.